Hi, my name is Richard Balsley, and I'm a U.S. education technical specialist focusing on device management with Windows 10. And today we're going to talk about how to manage shared devices in Windows 10. Now, with shared devices, we've seen customers have a number of challenges coming from Windows 7 or Windows 8 to Windows 10, and even some that are on Windows 10 today still have some of these issues. And there are really three main ones that I'm going to go over here today that we see most customers have. Uh, the first is uh, slow logons. Uh, slow logon times are a common complaint that a lot of customers have uh, between two to five minute logon times, sometimes even longer than that. And oftentimes stale GPOs can be the main culprit of these long logon times, but also custom images um, with bloated default user profiles. Oftentimes I'll see customers have a default user profile where someone may have downloaded a number of driver files or things that are really large and they don't clean out that default user profile. Well, when they sysprep the device and then they go and take that image and put it on a number of other devices, all the profiles that get spun up for the users have that content from that default user profile. And then we also have uh, Windows 10 um, does the provisioning of applications. So the universal Windows applications are provisioned at uh, the first logon time of a user. And that first logon time contributes some to that long logon that we see uh, from uh, new, new profiles being created on the device. Now, the second issue is related to too many profiles using too much disk space. Uh, sometimes we see customers often resort to using custom scripts or complex methods, and there are also some ways you can do this through group policy as well. Um, but these are things that customers have to deal with in order to, uh, to, to remove tons of profiles that could be on these devices. In some cases, there could be dozens or hundreds of profiles depending on how many users log on uh, to that device. Um, this is one of the main reasons why customers that we see in education, uh, they actually re-image devices every summer due to the, the number of profiles that are on these devices. And then lastly, updates installing during class time. Um, so if, um, if you're in education, you'll have a number of uh, devices that um, will be shared in the classroom and those devices, if they have updates installed during the class time, it obviously is going to impact a teacher and a student, and you obviously don't want that to occur because time is very precious during, uh, during, during class. So what ends up happening is customers just don't install updates during the school year. And if that's the case, this obviously is not a best practice from a security standpoint, and we don't want to see customers have to re-image these devices at the end of the year, oftentimes having to do either hundreds or thousands of devices. So before we get into how we solve that problem, we need to really understand how we use MDM or mobile device management within Windows 10, because that's really a lead into some of the new policies that we've added in Windows 10. So with MDM, uh, Windows 10 actually has a built-in MDM agent. So prior to Windows 10, if you're using Windows 7 and Windows 8, chances are you're probably deploying a third-party management tool or maybe even System Center Configuration Manager um, in order to manage those devices. And with Windows 10, any new Windows feature that is designed is typically going to be designed with MDM in mind. And there might be a group policy object that is used to manage that feature, um, although there isn't, there isn't a requirement that we have to have an MDM policy and a GPO. It's just really up to the feature team on how they want to manage that feature. The MDM policies can be managed via Microsoft Intune and other third-party MDM providers. And we're going to go and talk a lot about how we do that uh, later on in this presentation. And they can also be managed via provisioning packages or scripts. So if you're not familiar with what a provisioning package is, a provisioning package is just a collection of settings that you want to apply to a device. Um, this also can include um, the way that you join the device to the domain or join a device to Azure Active Directory, as well as any applications that you want to apply to the device. All those can be contained into a provisioning package. And MDM policies are often referred to as configuration service providers. So you have a CSP, and then within that CSP, you'll have a number of policy settings that can be applied to the device. And if you're looking for more information, um, if you go to aka.ms forward slash MDM10, um, this link will take you to a, to a web page um, that will explain the different MDM policies that we have applicable to your device. 
And if you go down to the bottom and scroll, uh, there's this link that says Configuration Service Provider Reference. If we drill into that, this will list all the different CSPs that are in Windows 10. And with every Windows release, we typically add either new CSPs or we add new policies within a CSP that can be used to manage um, on the device. So you'll see like here we have added new policies within just about every single release. And then these are all the different CSPs. Now we're gonna focus really on one CSP um, today and that's gonna be the shared PC CSP. And if we scroll through this um, and we click on to shared PC, we'll see in here um, the different policies that we can apply to a to a device um, and we'll talk more about the formatting um, how like this says vendor Microsoft shared PC and then the different policies and we'll talk more about the formatting and how all this stuff works but um, just understand that, that what you're looking at is really MDM policy information that an MDM provider would be really interested in you as a customer or as an IT professional that would be doing this um, this is beneficial for you to understand if you need to add custom policy settings, which we're going to go into a lot of detail later on. So the shared PC CSP, this is what addresses the three common issues that I mentioned earlier. This provides the faster logon times and how we do that is by configuring a number of local policies on the device. The second thing that we address is around the profile management, and we call this account management. Now with account management, we use shared PC to remove stale profiles. And what we mean by stale is any profile that hasn't been logged on to in 30 days, um, that's what we consider a stale or inactive. Um, and then we also will delete uh, profiles based on a free disk space threshold. So if the device falls below 25% of free disk, we will then delete the oldest profiles first up until 50% of free disk space is reached. And then we also allow for temporary users or guest accounts to be signed into. And this could be useful for uh, students or someone that might have some issues logging on with the username and password. Um, they can get a temporary um, account and then they can go and do, and then they have to go to a web browser or do something on the device. And then lastly, updates installing um, outside of class time. So we wanna make sure again that, that updates aren't installing when a user is using that device. And we wanna make sure this is happening you know, at night and how we do this is through some, uh, some additional power management policies that we apply to the device to allow it to wake up outside of class time. And by default, we have a, um, a 12 a.m. maintenance period that runs. It's actually between 12 and 2 a.m. And then we also allow for active hours to be configured within Windows 10. So when you specify active hours, this prevents updates from installing during those, those hours. So outside of that, updates will have the ability to install as well. If you want more information on all this, um, this link down below will take you to um, our shared PC configuration uh, page on uh, docs.microsoft.com. And it goes into uh, quite a bit of detail. We're gonna go into a lot of this detail during this presentation, uh, but this goes through and explains a lot of what we're doing within shared PC. And then also goes into um, some of the local policies that we set on the device um, in order to improve power um, updates and um, the ability to uh, clean up any of the old user profiles. So local policies. So local policies are set on the device to allow for quicker logons, to prevent the changing of the lock screen, changing the power button and lid close functioning will actually change that to sleep. So a student can't just turn the device off by tapping on the power button. If they hold the power button, then yes, it will power off. But if they tap it, um, it'll just sleep the device. We also modify sleep settings to preserve more battery life on the device and to allow for a better wake experience during the maintenance period. Uh, we disable Microsoft consumer experiences. So these are those things that would allow for applications to come on the device that you wouldn't expect. Things like Twitter, um, Candy Crush, and a number of other applications. We also prevent the usage of OneDrive sync client for file storage. So what this means is that if you go to File Explorer um, or if you try, try to click on OneDrive, you won't actually get to OneDrive within the file system. Um, however, we do allow you to be able to use the OneDrive Universal Windows Platform application to view the files that are stored in the cloud within OneDrive. Um, but you can also use Office Online. You'll be able to see all of your files that are stored in OneDrive as well as Office 365 Pro Plus if you're installing 
the Office 365 Pro Plus client on the device or those applications, um, you will then see those files that are sitting in OneDrive. You can actually look there and see the content that is that is up in the cloud. We also disable the use of biometrics, so things like Windows Hello. You won't be able to use fingerprint, face, um, or any of those methods to log on to the device uh, because it's a shared device. And we, by default, will store um, at most 10 biometrics. But when you're in a shared environment, especially in education, um, there's some issues with privacy and having um, student uh, biometrics actually stored on that device. We also configure automatic maintenance settings, and this is what allows us to wake the device outside of class time. We'll go into more of that detail a little bit later. Now, with account management, um, when account management is enabled, accounts are automatically deleted. And I mentioned earlier how we will delete accounts um, if the inactive accounts are older than 30 days, and as well as if the device falls below 25% of free disk space. Now, account deletion applies to really just about any account that is on the device, whether it's an Active Directory account, Azure Active Directory, or local accounts that are created by guest and the kiosk options. Uh, deletion that I mentioned earlier is, um, default, is performed if the account is older than 30 days, um, but, it's also, but it's performed at sign off and at system maintenance. There's a scheduled task that actually runs that does all of this work. And con this uh, is configurable, as I mentioned earlier. Um, if, it, if the device falls below 25% um, of free disk space, you can actually configure that amount. So if 25% is either too low or too high, and you want to adjust that, you can actually do that either through Windows Configuration Designer, or you can do it through Microsoft Intune. And we'll look at how you do that uh, later on in the demo. Um, again, deleting inactive accounts after 30 days. Um, that also is a configurable option as well. Now, with guest accounts, uh, guest accounts are temporary local accounts that don't require any credentials. Guest button is shown in the bottom left-hand corner of the logon screen. User just clicks on that, creates a temporary profile for that user. Again, good option for students or anyone that might have issues typing in credentials. Now, in terms of power management, uh, power management, um, this is really what shared PC um, leverages to set a number of power policies on the device so it wakes up and operates in a way that makes a lot of sense for uh, shared devices. Uh, so what we do is we, um, we in Shared PC will configure the Windows 10 maintenance period for 12 a.m. by default. Um, and this is actually a, a it's 12 a.m., but then there's a two hour randomization period that we add, so it's between 12 and, 12 and 2 a.m. And you can configure that value, so if 12 a.m. is uh, not, not the time you want, then you can configure it to be 2 a.m. or you can make it 3 a.m. But it's gonna have a two hour randomization added on top of that. So if you configure it to 2 a.m., then it'll be between 2 and 4 a.m. Shirt PC also will configure the lid close and the power button actions to sleep, and it'll disable hibernate, because in order for the device to wake, we use an RTC wake timer to do this, and we need the device to wake up. Um, and if the device is off and someone's powered that device down, we can't actually use the RTC wake timer to wake the device up. Now in shared PC, inside of the CSP, there is a policy that is called set power policies. And we set that to true by default um, to take advantage of the recommended power settings and to ensure that the device is wake during the maintenance period. Again, going into that RTC wake uh, timer that I mentioned earlier. And again, for older devices that don't have um, ACPI wake alarms, shared PC will override the RTC wake time um, using that R RTC wake timer value that I was talking about earlier. Um, and then lastly, uh, shared PC does not configure Windows Update. Um, however, it is recommended to set Windows Update to all, allow updates to install during automatic maintenance. And we'll go over how we do that um, in a minute. Now, when it comes to power, we also need to talk about connected standby because a, a number of devices that are shipping, primarily tablets and the entire Surface line, um, also leverages connected standby. But it goes by a number of different names. So this is also known as Instant Go or S0-I or S0 Low Power Idle. So if you go into Power Config, you can take a look at what type of power um, sleep states that your device supports and you'll see S0 low power idle, that references connected standby, um, but some marketing materials might also reference instant go. Uh, what this really is, it's just a persistent network connection in a low powered state. It's like your cell phone. Your cell phone is constantly connected to either a cell phone tower or to your wireless network in your home. And that network connection is what allows you to get notifications for applications, 
get, you get phone calls, you get all sorts of things because you are you have a persistent network connection with that cell phone. Well, with connected standby, it's the exact same behavior. So this is what allows things like Skype, get a Skype phone call. Um, that Skype phone call will come uh, directly to the device, even if the screen is turned off. Windows Update. Windows Update can go and check definition updates. It can get any cumulative updates or anything that Windows Update is trying to send down to the device. We can install those updates in that connected standby state. However, applications need to support this and they need to understand it. And that's where SCCM and other management tools really have a problem with connected standby devices. Because while the device has that persistent network connection, it doesn't have a persistent network connection to your SCCM environment because your agent, your SCCM client, CCM exec needs to be able to communicate to that, to your management point, to your software update point, to your distribution point. And it can't do any of that because the SCCM agent doesn't support connected standby, it doesn't understand that it's on. So the device actually has to be fully awake in order for SCCM to be able to turn the client on and then the client to go out and communicate to your SCCM infrastructure. Now, how automatic maintenance and connected standby devices work is that automatic maintenance, it uses RTC and it sets a wake timer to wake the device up, but the device has to be in sleep. But connected standby, it's not actually in sleep. It's just in this low power state. So there's a distinct difference between the two. And what this means is that a connected standby device can't actually wake up via automatic maintenance. So this basically puts your connected standby devices in this weird state where if you're managing them by SCCM, you won't be able to use automatic maintenance or shared PC to wake the device up. Um, we, we do have ways to, to, to handle that. I'm gonna talk more about this a little bit later, actually at the end of the presentation on how you can do this with SCCM devices. Um, but with connected standby devices, you won't be able to wake them up. But if they're S3, if the device is an S3 sleep state, we can wake it up just fine. But if the device is a um, connected standby device, automatic maintenance will not be able to wake that device up because the RTC wake timer won't do it uh, for those devices. Okay, so how do we enable this? How do we enable shared PC? Well, there's four ways to do it, five ways if you count WMI and scripting through PowerShell. Uh, the first way that I'm going to show is set up school PCs, and then we'll go through and look at Windows Configuration Designer, Intune for Education, and then finally we'll look at Intune using custom OMA URI settings. Okay, so let's get into the demo and we'll take a look at what all this stuff is. We'll start with set up school PCs. Okay, so if we open up Setup School PCs, so instead of School PCs, we can create our provisioning package in just a few steps. So click on Get Started. And then it's going to ask us to sign in. So go ahead and, and do that with our Azure Active Directory Global Administrator account. And then once it's done verifying the account, it's downloading a bulk enrollment token that's going to allow me to use this package on multiple devices. Um, the next step would be to uh, specify my wireless network. I'm just going to skip this. Don't really need it. Um, specify a prefix for my device names. Um, in this case, I'll just call it test. Um, and then settings. So I've got some settings here that I can uh, that I can customize. Um, I'm not actually going to go through all the settings here because this doesn't really um, all this doesn't pertain to um, shared PC, but these three in the middle do. Um, so allowing local storage, um, this is what's going to allow you to see File Explorer and you can see the C drive and all the other folders. Um, we have the optimizing the device for a single student instead of shared card lab. What this does is it allows you to, um, it allows for a single, a single student to um, extend that inactive uh, time window that I mentioned earlier where we were deleting profiles after, if the, device, if the profile has not been accessed in 30 days, we'll delete it. This actually extends that to 120 days. Um, so essentially we're extending it for four months. 
and then letting guests sign on to these PCs. This is, allows the guest button to show up on the logon screen. You click the guest button, you can log on with a temporary profile. I'm just going to skip over take a test and skip these recommended apps and then um, and then that's basically it. So at this point we would click accept, we would save our package, um, and then the package would then be put onto a USB stick. I'm actually not going to save this package because I don't necessarily need it right now. All right, next we'll look at Windows Configuration Designer. So Windows Configuration Di Designer is also an application you can download from the Windows Store. So you can go into the store, do a search for Windows Configuration Designer, and when you have the application installed, um, you'll end up at a screen that looks very similar to this. You'll see on the left-hand side the different types of projects you can create, and then on the, in the middle-ish area you'll see the recent projects that you've been working on. So in my case here, I'm going to create a brand new project to provision desktop devices. And in this, I can give this a name, Azure PC Demo. And then next, it'll take us through a wizard to provision our, our package. So here, I'm just going to type in a name for the device. Uh, I can optionally enter in a product key. This will upgrade the device. If the device that I have is Windows 10 Pro or Pro for Education, I can put a Windows 10 Enterprise or a Windows 10 Education product key here. And this will upgrade the device to either of those SKUs. I also have the ability here to configure the device for shared use. Um, so this is what turns on shared PC. And then I optionally can also remove pre-installed software. So as I go through the rest of this wizard, it's going to ask me a number of questions. Um, I'm not going to go through the uh, complete wizard here, but what I do want to focus on is um, once everything gets completed, then in the advanced editor, um, that's where we can see the different shared PC policies that are applied um, to, the, to the device. So we click on advanced, we will see our runtime settings. Now, if you completed the entire wizard, you'll see a number of additional settings um, in here. Um, but for the purposes of this video, I just want to go through what shared PC is configured on uh, with Windows Configuration Designer. So in Configuration Designer, um, we see the different uh, shared PC nodes. So there's a root node for shared PC, and then there's the account management enabled shared PC mode, and then policy customization. So if I click on the root node, I can see all of the sub nodes as well in one main view. If I just click into account management, then I'll see just those options. And if I look at enable shared PC mode or policy customization, I just see those. So if you want to see what you know everything that's in a, a higher level node, you can go ahead and do that. So here we see that shared PC is turned on. It's enabled and it's true. And then the account model is configured for domain joined and guests. But if you drill into these, you can see the different options that you have available to you. Now for the deletion policy, now everything under account management is related to how we deal with profiles. So we're dealing with our domain joined and guest accounts. And then for the deletion policy, we're deleting at disk based threshold. But I mentioned earlier that we can also delete at inactive threshold. So Windows Configuration Designer by default doesn't actually configure the inactive threshold option that we added in Windows 10 1703. So you need to select that option if you want to delete at the 30-day threshold that I mentioned earlier. Now we also have disk level caching. And disk level caching and deletion, um, these options are somewhat confusing um, if you look at just the name of the option. Um, disk level caching and disk level deletion, this is what relates to the 25% and 50% free disk space thresholds that I was mentioning earlier. So with disk level deletion, when we fall below 25% of free disk, which is what this option is, um, this actually needs to be set here to 25, um, we will start to delete old user profiles. Disk level caching um, is the amount that we delete up to. So if we set this to 50, then that is what I was mentioning earlier, that if we fall below 25% of free disk and we delete we will then delete up to 50% free disk space of all any old user profiles, starting with the oldest profiles first. However, as you just noticed, I had to actually manually set these values. If, if I didn't come in here to advanced configuration, we actually wouldn't have had these values set. They, they would have been set incorrectly. We're going to talk a lot more about 
um, what values don't get set correctly, depending on the different ways that you configure shared PC. Uh, we also have enable account manager. Um, that needs to be set in order for profiles to be deleted. Um, inactive threshold, this is what I mentioned earlier, that this needs to be set to 30. Um, now, this may be confusing. When you see this, it says numeric only, default equals 30. You might assume that we're going to set this to 30. It's actually not the case. If this is blank here, it is going to be blank when you can when you actually apply the package on the device. So you want to make sure to set the value here for whatever inactive threshold you want to set. Again, by default, that's 30. Uh, kiosk mode AUMID and kiosk mode user tile display text. Um, you can largely ignore these. Um, these are for obviously kiosk mode if you're going that route. Um, and it's actually probably better for you to configure this through Intune. Um, if you are doing this locally, then there are some ways to do that, but that's outside the scope of what this video is about. Now in terms of policy customization, so maintenance start time. Maintenance start time is the start time of when we wake the device. So I mentioned earlier, uh, 12 a.m. is when we do that. Now, this is somewhat of a strange policy because it's actually the daily start time of the maintenance hour given in minutes from midnight. So you might assume, well, if I just put one in here, that's going to be 1 a.m. If I put, I don't know, 12 in here, that's going to be 12 p.m. Um, if you assume a 24-hour clock, then you might think if I put 23 in here, that would be 11. It's actually not the case. This is all minutes from midnight. So what this means is that if I put 60 in here, that's 1 a.m. If I put 120, that's 2 a.m. 180, 3 a.m., you know, so on and so forth. So you'll have to go and do the math to figure out the exact time you want the maintenance start time to begin. By default, put zero in there, that's midnight. We then add two hours to that to randomize that. So it's gonna be between midnight and 2 a.m. Max fit page style, page file size in megabytes. Um, this goes into um, how we want to set the max page file size. Um, it only applies to systems with less than 32 gigs of storage and at least three gigs of RAM. Now restriction of local storage. So one of the other benefits to shared PC is that we can restrict what users see in File Explorer. We can restrict it down so that they only see the downloads folder uh, within their own user profiles. They can't see the C Windows folder or anything underneath that. They can only see their downloads folder. Um, this option um, needs to be configured um, to either false or true. Um, if you're doing this in education scenarios, you might think for your students, you wanna turn this off. If that's the case, restrict the local store, set that to true, then it'll be restricted. Now keep in mind with this setting, this setting applies to every user that logs onto the device, whether it's an admin or a standard user. So as an admin, if you're testing this for the very first time, you say, yeah, you know, that sounds great. Let me turn on restrict local storage. You do that, you apply to the device. Then you find, oh shoot, I wanna go and access the Windows folder. I need to go find a log file. I need to go do something. You can't really get access to that through File Explorer. So then what you'd have to do is either use Command Prompt or PowerShell in order to get access to any of the files and copy them to like a USB stick or something else. Um, so if you're testing this as an IT pro or as an admin, you may wanna turn this off initially and then when you're ready to go to production, turn this on to true. Uh, set EDU policies. Um, I showed you a link earlier that explains the different policy settings. If you want more details about what set EDU policies does, you can go to that link. Also down here in the bottom note of Windows Configuration Designer, you can actually click on these links and these will take you to um, the documentation on docs.microsoft.com to explain what some of these things do. Um, but if you're an EDU scenario, you will want to turn set EDU policies on. Um, there are some privacy settings that we configure, and there's a number of other things that we, that we turn on. It's a good idea for education customers to turn that on. Uh, our power policies, you definitely want to turn this on because this is what's going to um, allow the device to wake. This is how we set our RTC wake timer. Um, it also turns off hibernate. We t change all of the power button settings, uh, the lid close options. All that stuff is going to set the device uh, to sleep. And then lastly, sign in on resume. So if the device falls asleep, um, a user is going to get prompted to sign on. Um, if this is a problem for your environment, you can always turn this option off. And then lastly, sleep timeout. So shared PC configures the sleep timeout value to 300 seconds. Um, so what you want to do is probably configure this because five minutes might be too short. Um, in 1607, it used to be 3600. We changed it in 1703 to 300. Now there's some talk of actually getting this default change back to 3600. But as, a, as an IT pro, you probably want to configure this to something that makes more sense in your environment. 
Um, 15 minutes might make more sense. So remember, this is all in seconds. So 300 seconds is five minutes. Um, if you wanted to do like 10 minutes, then you said 600 seconds. So just change that to a value that makes sense uh, for your environment. And then once you've made all these changes, um, you're actually ready to save your project and then export the provisioning package to a um, to USB USB drive if you're going to use USB to provision your devices. So when you go through the wizard and you create the package pretty easy, you just go up to export and you just saw exactly what I did. Um, just take all the defaults. And then once you've uh, created the package, you can click on either of these links and these will take you to the folder that is housing the package. So what you'll then want to do is take this package and copy it to a USB drive. Once this has been copied to a USB drive, you can just apply the package uh, like normal um, to a device that is um, in the out-of-box experience state, so a Windows 10 uh, machine that hasn't been used yet. You can take this package, apply it to the device, and it'll have the shared PC policies um, set for that device. Alternatively, you can also take this package and you can install it through PowerShell. Um, in PowerShell, we have some uh, commandlets that you, you can use. One of those is install dash provisioning package. So if we open up PowerShell here, we do install dash provisioning package. You then pass the path to the package. So in my case, it would be this value here. And then I can specify to force the install and make that install quiet. And then if I wanted to log somewhere, I could also you know, specify what location I want it to log to. So if you were to run this command, I'm not running this on my device because it would cause some problems, but if I were to run this um, on the device, it would force the install of this package, it would install it quietly, and then it would log it to my ctemp shared PC logs folder. Um, so in this case, I don't really need to run this, but if you wanted to run this um, through something like SCCM, uh, if you wanted to apply shared PC to a device, um, you can easily do that through um, through Windows Configuration Designer and SCCM, take the package, um, upload it to a file location, create a package in SCCM, and then uh, specify the uh, command line that you see here. Okay, so Intune for Education. How do we how do we set shared PC up for Intune for Education? Well, let's go ahead and uh, take a look. So if you go to intuneeducation.portal.azure.com, uh, that will take you to the Intune for Education portal. And in there, we can configure groups of devices. So we click into groups, give it a moment to bring up all of our groups. We'll be able to select settings within a group. And under that, there is a option for shared device settings. If we select Optimize Devices for Shared Use, um, it gives us a, a notification message here that um, Optimizing Devices for Shared Use also enables remove built-in apps under the basic device settings and block access to local storage under device sharing settings. Um, you can disable those settings without affecting other settings um, for shared use. So what this means is that applications like um, Xbox app, mail and calendar, those things we will disable uh, for you in the Intune for Education portal. So if you look under basic device settings, you'll see that there's an option here for remove built-in Windows 10 apps. That's what Shared PC was mentioning here. Again, if we toggle this, 
tells us remove built-in apps under basic device settings and then block access to local storage under device sharing settings. And that's the option here that says allow access to local storage. So once you've done that, the shared PC is configured on the device. That's it. That's all you'd have to do. Um, there's nothing with Windows Configuration Designer. There's none of that other stuff. Um, you basically just turned it on to the device. All right, so let's get back into the presentation. Now with local policies, so I mentioned earlier that shared PC configures a number of local policies on the device. And local policies, they act like GPOs. Um, they're just local group policy objects. You can run GP result from your command line and see what's configured on a device. And there's some, a number of switches that you can add as well. And if you're curious what those local policies are, the link that I showed earlier, it's the same link that you see here. This will take you to all the different local policies that are applied to the device. Now, we have local policies, we have group policies that you're probably the most familiar with, and then we have MDM policies. And if these policies are all applied at the same time, you know, there's always the question that comes up, well, who's going to win? Well, we're talking about just MDM policies, so it's configuration designer sets MDM policies, Intune sets MDM policies. Between the two of those, whoever sets those policies, who wins? Well, the last write generally wins, depending on the CSP, but for the most part, in my experience, last write generally wins just about all the time. So what this means is that Intune custom policies, or Intune policies, can come down and just write is to overwrite whatever Windows Configuration Designer or Setup School PCs is setting on the device. But when it comes to group policy or local group policy objects in MDM, who, who's going to win that? Well, by default, and prior to 1803, group policy or local policy would always win out against MDM policy. However, in 1803, we have created a policy that when specified, will allow MDM to win over GP if it is configured. So I've got a path here that shows what the, what the policy is. We call the policy MDM wins over GP. If that's set to one, then MDM will win over GP. Now this policy is unique because if this is set, then you can't change it back. So if you set it to one, you can't go back in and set it to zero and have group policies or local policies take over for MDM policies. It's, it's a one-way street. Now, if it's not set, if we don't set MDM wins over GP, then it's impossible to change any of the shared PC settings that are configured via local group policy. Uh, so what this means is that if you're looking at maybe turning on OneDrive, so you want OneDrive file sync turned on and you don't want to use the universal Windows platform app, we're gonna have a video later that explains exactly how to configure OneDrive. So you can use shared PC and OneDrive at the same time and have them coexist. Um, but if you're looking at doing something like that, you need to configure MDM wins over GP because we need to take over the local group policy setting that, um, that blocks something like OneDrive. Now Windows, or I'm sorry, MDM wins over GP, that only affects policy CSP values that are in 1803. Um, in the future, we're looking at other CSPs to have MDM wins over GP affect them as well. But right now, anything that falls under the policy CSP um, list of policies um, is only going to be applicable um, with MDM wins over GP. Okay, so getting back to shared PC, um, how do we troubleshoot all this? Well, first thing is there's a log. Um, that log is sitting under C Windows shared PC setup. And there's also HQ Local Machine, Software Microsoft Windows, current version shared PC. This registry location has two nodes in it, two keys, account management and node values. So the account management key contains the settings on how profiles are managed. Um, and the node values contains what values are set for the features that shared PC manage, manages. So the node values key, um, when you look at that key in the registry, it shows a number of registry node value options. It's just a, a list of numbers. So it could be all the way from 0, 1 all the way down to, to 16. Sometimes you might only see like just a few of them. You might only say like 0, 2, 0, 4, 0, 5. Um, you, so you may not see every single option set initially. Um, but this table, um, I made this table just to show what each of those numerical values references into its node name. So I mapped the registry 
numerical value to a node name. And then I'm also showing in here the what is set by Intune for Education, what's set by Setup School PCs, and what is set by Windows Configuration Designer. And then I also show what is the recommended value to be set. Uh, because you can set these recommended values through custom policies in Intune, which we're going to look at here in just a minute. But what's interesting about this table is that there are some gaps here. So you'll see in the column that shows set by Intune for Education, you'll see that value one, which is enable shared PC mode, is set to one. So we're turning on shared PC, and you see across the board, every single tool sets that. But the second option, set EDU policies, that's blank. And we don't see it set by setup school PCs. We don't see it set by Windows Configuration Designer using its default values. Now, obviously, set EDU policies, if you're an EDU customer, you should be setting that to one. But Intune for Education is not setting that to one. So that's a, that's a bug. We're looking at getting that fixed um, here in a future release of Intune for Education. Uh, but right now, that value is not set to one, or at least as of when 18.03 was released, that value wasn't set then. Uh, set power policies is also not set to one. However, what you'll notice is you keep going down the list, these items that are blank, they're not set at all. So if you look at setup school PCs, there are some values that aren't set there. If you look at Windows Configuration Designer, there are some values that aren't set there. However, when you use something like Windows Configuration Designer or setup school PCs, and you also use Intune, or Intune for Education, we merge the values together. Or if there's a conflicting value, we will overwrite and the last write is going to win. So if you look at setup school PCs and Intune for Education, you'll see that Enable shared PC mode is set to one for both, so that value is going to be one. But you see setup school PCs is set to one, and then city to you policies is set to blank. Well, that value is also going to be set to one because there wasn't anything set to begin with, so we just leave the value there. So that value is going to be set to one. So power policies, it also is going to be one if you're using Intune for Education because you're using setup school PCs. But the maintenance start time, that wasn't set by setup school PCs, but, may, but Intune for Education is setting it to zero. So that value will be set on the device to zero. So as we start to merge these policies together, you'll eventually get a complete set setup for the device. It's just that we don't initially see these policy settings until Intune fully sets all the policies down on the device. But if you wanted to set these as the recommended values, then if you look at the recommended values column, you'll see what everything should be set to. And we'll go into how to set those through custom policy settings just to make sure that everything is set uh, correctly on the device. Now this table here um, is a easy way to just copy and paste these custom OMA URI values into uh, full Intune to set the custom policies that we're about to go over here in just a second. Uh, but this table is a reference. I'm going to post this up. Uh, there'll be a, a, link, a link in the video that you can just go ahead and click on um, in the description of the video. Click on that link. It'll take you to, uh, to, to my web page. It'll have this table. So you can just copy and paste these values. Makes it a lot easier than having to manually type this stuff in. Um, but this goes through and sets all of the recommended values that I, that I showed in the previous uh, table. Okay, so custom policies. Um, what do those look like in full Intune? So if we go into the Azure portal and we click on Intune, we will see here that we have device configuration. So we'll just click on, click on that and then go to profiles. And I've already configured a policy here that says shared PC custom. And it says doesn't enable shared PC. And the reason it says that is because shared PC has already been enabled from Windows Configuration Designer or set of school PCs. So because it's already been turned on, I don't need to turn it on. But if I was using something like Autopilot and I wanted shared PC to actually be turned on, then I would need to customize the policy to turn on shared PC. Uh, so that's why it's just not on in this policy. Um, so if we click into this, uh, go to Properties and select Settings, this will then show all the different settings that have been configured. And in Intune, there's this Maximize button. I can click on this, and this will maximize all the policies so we can easily read what's been set. So on the left-hand side, we have a prefix name, a shared PC. The name doesn't matter. You can set that to whatever you want. I, I like to prefix things so it makes so I know what I'm what I've configured. So here it says shared PC is the policy that I configured, and then all the individual policies and beneath that CSP. 
Um, and then we have the different OMA URIs. So these OMA URIs are the same OMA URIs that you saw in that table that I referenced earlier. Just copy and paste those in. And then the different values. So the majority of these, um, well, actually about half and half, they'll either be integer values or they will be um, Boolean value values. So just configure those and then um, you'll be good to go. So once you have all of those uh, policies configured, um, and just to do one of those as an example, if we click on add, um, just give it a name. Um, let me just go back into here. I'll just grab something. Uh, SETI DU restart. It's a good one. Actually, I'll do shared PC account model. So let's take shared PC account model. Let's copy that into here. Custom OMA URI. I'll just copy this. It's very important that when you copy these, that you're making sure to copy the period that's in the front and then don't have a space at the end. You can see when I copied this, there's a slight space at the end there. So when I paste this in, I'm gonna have a space or I potentially could have a space at the end. So just make sure that there is no space. In this case, it looks like it didn't actually take it over. So that's good. Um, so make sure there's no space there and make sure at the beginning, there's no space in front. It kind of looks like there might be one because there's a lot of white space there. So just make sure there's no space in the front either and make sure that you have the period. The period is very important, so that's there. And then for this option, this would be a integer value. And then as you see over here on the right for that, it's set to two. So if I just typed in two, that's basically all you'd have to do to add these individual um, only URIs. So it's not, not too complex. There's just a lot of them to do. It could be a little tedious, um, but that's how you would set those up. And once you have this configured, um, you then need to assign the custom policy to a device or to a group. So in here, we'll select assignments. And then in my case, I have assigned to all devices, but you can also go to a group level as well, select selected groups, and then select this to um, a group. Uh, be, be, be warned that if you select all devices or all users that um, you are actually impacting everyone. So you may want to set this down to a sub-level group so that where you're not hitting all devices. This would be the same thing like trying to target something in SCC into all systems. You generally wouldn't do something like that because you impact not only just your workstations but also your servers. While you won't be hitting servers in Intune, um, you could hit administrative machines or machines that aren't actually shared. So just be careful on what you're trying to target. Okay, so I'm not going to save that. but. Those are the custom settings that you would apply. Um, very, very easy to do that. Um, and then you also might might have wondered why I have a couple of these things that are highlighted in yellow. Um, these are yellow because these are the things that generally most customers would want to customize. So the inactive threshold, um, 30 days, might be too, too short. Maybe you have students that take longer breaks. If that's the case, um, you might set this to 60 days or 90 days. And then the restrict local storage, I have it set to false at least as my recommended setting, but for production environment, you probably want this set to true for your student devices so they don't get access to the rest of the file system. <clears throat> okay. So now what happens if I wanna just wake my machine up? Well, if you wanna just wake your machine um, using SCCM, generally customers that you're using SCCM, they just wanna wake the machine and then have the SCCM client install its updates and then the machine just falls back asleep. If that's the case, I have a blog post. And this blog post um, really goes into a lot of what I've already talked about. But it also goes into um, how to configure all of this through group policy. So there's a video that goes along with that. But if you go all the way down to about halfway through, maybe closer to the bottom, there's an option here that says how to enable in group policy. So if you don't want to use shared PC, but you just want to use automatic maintenance, you can do that all through group policy. But there's a but just that by itself isn't going to get you where, where you want. So follow this guide here. There's also a script here that will turn on the RTC wake timer on the device. Um, and it'll also um, configure a scheduled task using um, a group policy that's, a, that's called update power policy for cart restarts. This will actually set up a scheduled task that will wake the device. So if you follow this guidance, um, this should wake your devices, but remember your device has to support S3 sleep. If you do a power config forward slash A on the device, it'll tell you what power states your device supports. And if it says that it supports standby or S0 low power idle, that means that the device supports connected standby. 
And if that's the case, then you won't be able to um, you won't be able to wake the device up using automatic maintenance. Um, and then there's some guidance here if you're running 1607 um, or earlier. If you're running that, you've got some problems. You really need to move off of 1607 because support um, is ending for that uh, really, really soon. Um, actually, it may have already ended now. So get off of 1607 if you're already on it. And OneDrive. So what about OneDrive? What, what can I do to enable OneDrive? Well, share, like I mentioned earlier, SharePC disables it. Um, and it really made a lot of sense because back then in 16.07, OneDrive didn't have files on demand. So if you were syncing a folder, you, syn you synced every single file that was, on that, that was within that folder. So it could have chewed up a ton of disk space. So with shared devices, generally in school scenarios, they don't have gigantic hard drives. So it didn't make a lot of sense back then to, to have OneDrive turned on. But now we're seeing a lot more customers asking to use the full OneDrive instead of the cloud or instead of uh, OneDrive UWP. So how do you enable files on demand and how do you enable SSO and doing all that stuff to be into, into managed? Um, I'm gonna create a separate video that goes into more depth because this one's getting a little bit long right now. Um, but we'll go into much further depth into how to enable OneDrive um, on devices um, that are leveraging shared PC or that may not even be using shared PC and you just want to be able to configure OneDrive SSO and be able to have files on demand turned on by default without the user having to type in an additional credential to do that. So again, we'll go over that in a, um, in a separate video. And finally, let's take a look at how we can troubleshoot shared PC. And the way we're gonna do this is we're gonna use Windows Configuration Designer to create our provisioning package and apply it to a virtual machine. When we do that, we'll take the default shared PC settings that come from Configuration Designer, and then in Intune, we have our custom uh, policy that will configure um, all of the recommended settings that I mentioned earlier, and we'll see what that looks like on a device. All right, so we're on our virtual machine that just was enrolled into Microsoft Intune and we applied a provisioning package through from Windows Configuration Designer that set up shared PC. So what we're looking at right now is the event viewer. And in the event viewer, um, if you've never done this before, um, you can actually look and see um, exactly what um, is being applied through um, your mobile device management service, whether that's Intune or something else. And what I'm looking at right now is the um, device management enterprise diagnostics provider um, event log. So if you scroll through here, go to Applications and Services Logs, Microsoft Windows, and then scroll on down to Device Management Enterprise Diagnostics Provider, and you want to go to the admin node. And then from there, generally this is where you would go to, to troubleshoot and just see what is being applied to your device through MDM. Um, and if we look at this, I can, I can grab um, some different settings, like I've got yeah, I mentioned earlier, MDM wins over GP. Um, you know, this policy is a um, you know, policy that um, I applied through Intune. Um, so if I scroll through here, I can see a number of policies that have been applied, like allow region, I see allow date time. So all of these policies have been, have been applied through, through MDM. Now, one thing you won't find in here, and if we refresh this, there's a bunch of other things that have come through. Um, if I look in here for shared PC, what I'll find is an error, but that's the only thing I, I'll find. Now, shared PC is unique in that most every other policy will write something to the event log, but the shared PC CSP only writes things in here if there's a problem. So you have no way of knowing, did my shared PC settings that I applied from full Intune, did those come over? So let's take a look at the registry because the registry actually gives us a lot more insight and there's also a, a log that we'll look at as well. So in the registry, um, I'm navigated to HQ Local Machines, Software, Microsoft, Windows, Current Version, Shared PC. So if we go under um, this value, we'll see that the Shared PC mode has been configured and then we'll also see that we have a value here called Node Values. And Node Values is what um, has all the different settings that have been applied through shared PC. But remember earlier, 
when I had showed that table that showed the numerical value and then the actual value that that is set to. So we need that table to understand what exactly was set to make sure that things were set correctly. Now, alternatively, you can go into the log file and the log file that actually sits in C windows shared PC setup. So when you open that file up, this will go through and it'll log and tell you what has been set on the device through shared PC. Now, in the package, the provisioning package from Wicked had shared PC already configured. So because it had that configured already at 10.33 a.m., it had applied all these settings. You can see that it applied because it says node value add eight and then node set value eight and then configure account model, set account manager account model. So again, if we go back to the node values, node value eight in the registry is this value here and that's set to two. And you can see that it was set to two here. Um, so, and if you look at the lines below it, you can see that this is account model. So you can sort of glean that, okay, account model must map to value eight. And then we see node add nine, nine one. So we set that, so we set value nine to one and that was the deletion policy node. So then if you go back into here, we look at nine, nine is, well, nine is now set to two. The reason that's set to two is because Intune came over the top and it actually set the, the, the recommended setting through Intune as opposed to what Windows Configuration Designer was doing. And we'll see that later on when I open this log file again, we'll see the new things that were added from Intune. But when, when the provisioning package was applied, it actually set that value to one. Um, and then that was deletion policy. So you can go through all of these and see what was added and what was set. Um, but it's really difficult to do that and try to match like what this value is versus um, what is in the registry. So if you use the table that I mentioned earlier, that table can actually help see what the settings are supposed to be. So if you wanted to quickly cross-reference what these are versus you know what the values that these have been set to, you can do that through that table. But if we close out of this and reopen the log file, and remember we had deletion policy node and that value was nine. If we scroll all the way down, we see a number of get values and we see the time. This is 10 minutes after the device was provisioned. We see a whole bunch of get value settings. If we scroll up to around 10.37, Should see a set value nine here. Let's try going up. Okay, so we see the set value nine is set to two. So this was set again by Intune. Intune dropped that value down onto the device and it set and it changed that value. Um, you're also seeing that we've set some additional values. Initially, we had get value 11 was set to 25. Now that's been set to 50. So you're seeing that Intune is now coming down and actually overriding some of these settings. Because remember, last write wins when it comes to these policy settings. So if you're troubleshooting and you want to know what is being applied to the device, this is exactly how, how you would do that. And then cross-reference that table, which again, I'm going to publish that table up on, on my website. I'll have a link to it in the description of this video below. And you can go ahead and, and use that table to cross-reference if you're trying to figure out what your shared PC policies are set to. And with that, that concludes um, this session on how to manage shared devices with Windows 10. Uh, thanks for watching.